when I narrated my story to the housekeeper, she, 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 she shed tears. She cried and she told me, I'm not going to punish you. I'm going to let you move in into my house. And that is how my, my life got at least, at least better. But the depression had gotten so worse that sometimes at night I would just wake up, start walking, find myself in the market at, at like 2 a.m. Yes, yes. In, in the market at 2 a.m., I don't have shoes, I don't have, I, I'm in my pajamas. I cannot explain what was, it, what was happening. So one of these fine days, my friend just tells me we go to the health unit so that they, they know or they find out what is happening with me. And I was diagnosed to have complex PTSD. PTSD is post-traumatic stress disorder. That is what they diagnosed at that time. And I had now to go to, I had now to go to hospital and get treated. So I started medication, they are called psychotropic medication, uh, the medication that you are given for having mental illness, and I took that until I completed my fourth year. After fourth year, I went back home, and at this time now, I don't have medication, I don't have money, my mom is just there again, so I, I, I tried to volunteer at some organization, and from there now, I chose to come to Nairobi. I did. Hi guys, what's popping? It's Wagal Trudy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, Karibu Sana. And to the returning subscriber, thank you so much for the love you show me, guys. Hey, thank you for 23k subscribers. I'm so happy, guys. We are road to 100k subscribers. And today on my show, I have this beautiful lady, and she has a story, guys. As I told you, I'll be uh, letter different stories from different people. She has an inspir in inspiration, a uh, touching story since she was born and uh, I know after this story you will get to learn something from her so I'll let her introduce herself and then she will take us through the story guys Sasa kindly introduce yourself to my fans then you to be a story well my name is Deborah Joy Juma um, I'm, a, I'm born in a family of five siblings and I'm um, 27. <laughs> I know girls most of the time don't like to say their age. I'm 27 years old. So my story is one of trauma. Uh, I have grown up with a lot of childhood trauma and I have gone through so much rejection and so much abandonment. When my mom gave birth to me, she was still very young. She was 19 and my dad was 21. So basically they were still young people, a young couple, and they didn't know how to take care of us. My mom was from a Muslim background and my dad was a Christian. So when they gave birth to my sister and I, my mom had to go back to school because she was barely 20. So she went back to college and we were left with my grandmother. Uh, for like five years we stayed with our grandmother and then my mom came for us and then we met our dad for the first time. And my dad was one of the harshest men that I've ever experienced in life. Uh, he would like beat us so much, sometimes he would, he would slap us, he would kick us, he was very bitter with life. So that, that was basically who he was. And most of the time they used to fight with my mother also too. There was a lot of domestic violence at home. Um, and so uh, that is what I experienced most of the time. Every day, every night, they would fight, they would quarrel. And something that is very weird, that I know the viewers will find it very weird, is that my parents were pastors in church. My dad was a senior pastor, and my mom was a pastress. And so they were ministering to people in church, yet at home they were fighting every day. Um, and, in the, and the fights affected us so much as children, because sometimes we lacked food, we lacked essential things because both of them were uh, escaping res responsibilities. My mom would say, go to dad and say, we need this. And dad would say, it's mom's responsibility. So now we were the ones to suffer. So we suffered so much until there was a time they fought until my dad had, um, had goons attack him and cut his head. Uh, I'm told that mom, mom had planned that to happen. So these guys were going to kill each other, basically. So now what happened, my dad came back this, the following morning. He was bleeding and he, he, had, he had a bandage, it was still wet. And he tells my mom, do not touch my, my clothes. Just let my, my dirty clothes, the ones that have blood, just let them be. But my mom was harsh again. They started fighting. And do you know what my mom did? She just pulled out the bandage that was still very wet. 
and my dad I had and I saw my dad cry like a little baby that day and from that time now my mom and my dad had to separate and this is how the separation happened we we joined for I joined for one my sister also joined for one we we have a difference an age difference of one year but we have grown together we have gone to the same classes together so we both joined for one but different schools so when schools closed, one of our teachers just called me and told me, you're not going home, you're going to stay where your, your mother is. I asked, where is my mother? And he's like, in Bungoma. So that's how I left, my, I, I left school and went to where my mom was. And that was the end of my dad in my life again. It is now 13 years old, 13 years later. I have never heard about him. I have never seen him. I have never talked to him. I don't know where he lives. I hear from rumors that he remarried and he has other children. So now life became tougher with mom because now we were five siblings. And Are you the first one? The second born. Yes. So we were five siblings and all of us had to go to school. Mom is in a rental a rented house. It's one 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 room, a single room. So now mom told us you are going we are going to struggle until we reach the end. So now we, we used to be to be sent home for fees. Uh, I remember there was a time when I was in Form 3, I was actually almost kidnapped by strangers because I, I had been sent for fees and I didn't know the vehicle to, to board. So now um, that struggle of just back and forth put me into mental health issues. Now, I started having depression in Form 2 and I didn't know that I have depression. This is what would happen. I would sometimes go out during um, break time when we go for break time, I lie down and I forget that it's time to go back to class. So two lessons later is when they find me. And it went on and on and on. And at some point, I denied my parents. I told people, guys, you know what? I'm an orphan. Because I didn't have supportive parents. Nobody was visiting me. Nobody cared about me. It's only a few teachers. One teacher called Mr. Onyango and another teacher called Madam Sarah Sabwami were the ones who acted as surrogate parents. So now I... I struggled and struggled and struggled through. The only thing that kept me sane was hope and faith. I had faith in God. Um, I have grown up with the, the pastoral ministry of my parents. It brought out the faith part in me that can cannot be broken. So I had faith and I knew that I would conquer. Luckily, I scored a B plus from all those situations and I landed at Kenyatta University. Nobody had prepared me that when you go to campus, you have to buy food every day. So I went to campus and I'm very happy. I'm bubbly. I've gotten my letter. I didn't even have enough fees. I applied for help and I got uh, the help loan. So I paid fees and I was ready to go to school to, to continue with my studies now, to start lectures. Shock on me. I had to pay, I had to pay some money before buying food before getting food. So I go to the mess and they tell me, where is your receipt? I, I, I don't know. I don't have any receipt. I didn't know people pay for, for food. So, so now that led me into working for people. I told myself I'm not going to look for men to give me money or any other way to get money. I told myself I'm going to work hard and just earn money. If I calculate the lectures that I attended in campus, they are less than 40%. Because I spent almost all my time just working for people as a nanny. I worked as a house girl and it was very, very traumatizing. Because I have mental health issues. I'm struggling with depression. I'm struggling so much and I have to cook. Sometimes you find me cooking with soap, like liquid soap instead of instead of, instead of cooking, cooking oil. oil. And I can't tell, I don't know how I've gotten myself into cooking like that, you know. So I'm sent away, I'm told I'm a witch. Um, so I went through those things as I was working as a nanny. So later I started working for people on the farms. I worked on the farms and there's this one time I went to school, I, I had an exam. And I pirated, I, I slept with someone on, on her bed, and that was illegal at Kenyatta University. So one of the night attendants comes and finds me there and tells me, you know what, you're going in for a disciplinary action. And he, he took me to, to, the, to the housekeeper. When I narrated my story to the housekeeper, she, 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 she shed tears. She cried and she told me, I'm not going to punish you, I'm going to let you move in into my house. 
and that is how my my life got at least at least better but the depression had gotten so worse that sometimes at night i would just wake up start walking find myself in the market at at like 2 a.m yes yes in in the market at 2 a.m i don't have shoes i don't have i i'm in my pajamas i cannot explain what was it, what was happening so one of these fine days my friend just tells me we go to the health unit so that they they know or they find out what is happening with me and i was diagnosed to have complex ptsd ptsd is post traumatic stress disorder that is what they diagnosed at that time and i had now to go to i had now to go to hospital and get treated So I started medication they are called psychotropic medication uh the medication that you are given for having mental illness and I took that until I completed my fourth year after fourth year I went back home and at this time now I don't have medication I don't have money my mom is just there again so I I I tried to volunteer at some organization and from there now I chose to come to Nairobi I didn't know where I was going I just came to Nairobi homeless without anybody uh, at them at the, the children's home where I had volunteered I had made a friend called Naomi so Naomi told me when you come to Nairobi I can accommodate you she accommodated me but she didn't have a job she used to work online so we we was basically just surviving and then at some point I, I almost killed myself I was very suicidal because I don't have medication and I have very very bad mental health set so so Uh, I reached out to a certain lady on Facebook. She's called Grace Karyuki and she lives with me up to now. Grace told me you need counseling, you need therapy. And so um we met. She came to where I was. I shared with her my story. I cried. I told her how I have been abandoned and rejected and I don't have anyone even to to call family at that time. And she told me, "Yeah, you can move in with me. I'll help you." I used to struggle so much. I can't count the number of times I have tried to commit suicide but I, I I thank God because all these times that I have tried none has succeeded. There's a time she even found me trying to hang myself literally. There are times she has found me with a knife wanting to slit my throat at night literally but that didn't di- didn't work didn't happen because God was always on the throne. So now uh I finished um I I I I finished my campus I graduated I started living with her and then we started the journey of now mental therapy mental therapy uh going for treatment i am still under the psychotropic medication as we speak i i i take medication at night i do quetiapine at night i do diazepam at night and in the morning i do medication called zosart and another one called aten so i'm still under psycho- psychiatric review and therapy but it is working well so the thing that i want to tell people is the uh, the, the having the heart of resilience you know it's very easy for you to give up when situations around you are putting you down when nobody is there for you when nobody cares about you when nobody is there to watch over you rejection will will make you do things that are not good so i want to uh, to, uh, to to let people know that mental health issue uh, issues are real and they are happening and we need to be kind to one another you know if i didn't find grace maybe it by today i might be dead you know so the the person you are standing next to today might be going through a very hard time and the only thing that they need is you to tell them we, you are valued and you are a person that are, is needed in this world you know you are a person that can bring change in this world no matter where you are so that made me uh, write a book because now my situation i wanted to bring it out to the world for people to read out and people to to know that mental health is there and for people to know that it is it is easy even when it is hard i know that is a paradox it is easy even when it is hard you can be bent but you are not broken you can be bent today you can be bent by circumstances but you are not broken you can still pick up your pieces and you can still forge forward so i wrote the book when life hurts that's my book it's called when life hurts and it narrates all the things i've gone through and the resilience that i have fought through that book 
book is written out of a victor point of view and not a victim point of view because you know it's easy for you to throw pity parties and do woye woye here and there when life hurts uh, and it's also very easy for you to stand your ground and to say today not today satan yeah. yeah not today satan so that's just part of my story how i have overcome mental health issues and grown and through re re resilience been able to make it to where i am today yeah i don't know whether you have any question okay i'm so sorry for you uh, this story is so touching um, even out of words, but personally, uh, maybe what I would like to ask you, so far have you maybe ever tried to reach out to your parents to know where they are and maybe try to talk at least with you uh, how Muneza Patana Kivipi, because now it's like Unakai, it's like Uko Orphan, right? Yeah, because yeah. you really don't know where they are. Have you ever tried maybe to look for them? Yeah, uh, I have never tried to look for my dad because Honestly, I am still bitter with my dad. A little bit bitter with my dad. Uh, he left us when we needed him more. But my mom, uh, I reach out to her once in a while. I send her money for upkeep because I have twin brothers who are still young. They are 12 years old. I support them. I support my mom. And, but we don't have a relationship. We don't have that rapport, the, the mother-daughter rapport, which you can talk and you can hang out with and you can do things together that is not there yeah okay and uh, uh maybe to take you back kidogo uh umeleza story story ni refu i mean maisikiza sana maybe uh utueleze kidogo when did this story happen ile time your dad and your mom started to fight mm -hmm. again my dad akakuja akiwa na bandage and everything when the, did it happen i was in primary school actually when the fight started i was in in, in grade 2 they used to fight, but I didn't know they were fighting. I just used to hear my mom crying at night. I came to know it was domestic violence when I, when I grew like up to grade 7. That's when I knew it was domestic violence. But these guys used to fight every day when I was in grade 2. Then my dad disappeared and came to Nairobi. He never reached out to us. And then he came back when I was in grade 5. When he came back, he came back as a very harsh parent. He didn't have a job, and my mom by that time had a job. She's a teacher, by, uh, posted by TSE. So the, my, my mom said we stay with my dad, and then she leaves us. So she goes to a different place where she was working. But my dad was very, very abusive. I remember there's a time when my mom closed school and came home. Then one of the neighbors called her and told her, young, ma young woman, you were unable to kill your kids, so you left them for their father to kill them. And that is when my mom said we can move with her to where she was teaching. Yeah. And that movement happened. We, came, we closed school, we came back, and then after we closed school again, dad disappeared, and we never knew where he went to. The church that he was pastoring is another thing that can be a wound, but it isn't a wound for me, because I healed. I imagined who I was following. I was not following my dad. I was not following the church. I was following Jesus. Because Jesus said that follow me. He didn't say follow follow my people or follow. He said follow me. So if I was to just succumb to the circumstances, even now I wouldn't know Jesus. My elder sister is a Muslim. That is the path she chose. Because I know she was confused, literally. She didn't know. Maybe she didn't understand this Christian faith that we are saying. We are preaching, then we are fighting at home. You see, my younger brother, the one that follows me, is an atheist. He doesn't want to hear anything about God. He doesn't want God in any of his questions. And I know it's because of all this trauma. So resilience has kept me. Young, young age up to the adulthood that I'm in, it's the re resilience that has kept me. Yeah. After I've heard your story, it's really touching, and uh, all I can say, it needs uh, perseverance in knowing God. Yes, and yes, uh, maybe yes. we have so many people outside who are watching this video, and they're going through the same the same, same situation you are, mm. and they don't want to open up or maybe speak it out so that uh, what we're at least was scared you was idea. Mm. What can you tell them? You know, I know people judge us a lot. I know there's a lot of judgment out here, and when you start speaking about something, people even avoid you. But today, I know I am just one person, and I know you are also there. They can lean on us. They can lean on us. 
you can lean on my faith, you can lean on me, even if I'm broken, I will help you stand. And they can lean on even you, because you do these interviews and you know how traumatic experiences affect people, they can lean on you too. So, and then I, I would also want to say, even if you don't want to help someone, if someone reaches out to you and they say they have a mental health issue and they are suffering and you don't want to help them, please just be kind, leave them. Do not judge, do not say anything, do not start uh, giving out opinions here and there, just let them be. You know, uh, I call it the ministry of silence. Be silent. Just, just don't tell them, snap out of it. Because things like depression, you cannot snap out of them. Complex post-traumatic stress disorder, you cannot snap out of ADHD. You cannot snap schizophrenia. You cannot snap out of the, that. So let us be kind. That is what I would say. And those people that are suffering, do not suffer alone. We are here and there are very many people willing to help. I'll give you my therapist. My therapist is called Grace Karyuki. If you just search Grace Karyuki in Deritu, you will find her on Facebook. And she can walk with you. Don't feel shy. Don't feel ashamed. These things are real and people are suffering. They are having mental illnesses. Don't fear. Okay. As we wind up this story, uh, I know uh, you sharing this story, it took you some time, quite some time for you to come up and open up uh, this story. Maybe at what point did you realize now? Now I am ready to share this story. Yeah, now the psychotropic medications that I'm taking help me to calm the brain. You know, another condition that I have is bipolar. Bipolar is just not being able to balance. You are high and then you are low. So there's no middle, you know. So the psychotropic medication made me come up to that middle point where I can now reason and my brain is at rest. So from that point now, I can speak out. I can share, I can talk about it, you know. And another thing that also made me to start talking about this is therapy. Just talking to a, trusting a mental health therapist who is qualified and licensed will help you to speak about these things. Yeah, that is what has helped okay, me. Okay, you've said you have a book and maybe so many people would like to get that book. Uh, maybe you have social media handles. Mm -hmm. How can they get the book? So, if you want to get my book, When, when Life Hurts, you can send, uh, it, it's, it goes for 500 shillings, so you just send money to 0701469644, that is 0701469644. If you want to find me on Facebook, I'm Debra Joy Juma. Uh, on Instagram, Debra Joy Juma. On Twitter, at Debra Juma1. Okay. Yes. Uh, so many people are do launching their books. Are you uh, planning maybe to do your launching anytime yes, soon? And maybe yes. if uh, I'm launching my book at Alliance Fonze on um, 12th. On 12th, come listen to When Life Hurts. Listen, get to know the story. It is free of charge. You are getting in free of charge. So if you want to see, come there. Come there, we'll be there, we'll receive you, and we will listen to you. You will listen to when, when life hurts, and maybe you may, you may grab a copy for yourself or for your friend. Yeah. Thank you so much, Deborah. I'm so humbled to have you on my show, and uh, I want to wish you all the best. Thank I know everything happens for good, and you are yes. here for purposely to inspire people. Yes. And I believe through you, so many people are going to get inspired, mm -hmm. and uh, kuna watu pia watakama pua open up, so that tuwa saidike. Yes, yes, I appreciate yes. sana, na mina Thank kush you. all the best. Mitabu zako zirunuliwe, kabisa in Jesus name. Amen. May God bless you so much. Mm. So guys, nimekuwa na Debra on my show, you've heard her story, and uh, let's go support her. Ameka pale namba yake, tununue hizo vitabu. Personally, I'm going to grab one, at least in this case story. Unaja, maybe, maybe I should show the, the book. Yes, you can, book you can, you can, you can show I can us. Show, I can show how the book looks like so okay. people can, can know it. Okay. Boja kwanza nuru tuko shoot. Yeah. Oh. When life hurts, looks like that. When life hurts. So you grab a copy by Deborah Joy Juma. Yeah, guys, this is the book. Only and you get inspired. Yes. So, so guys, I hope you're going to buy this book. Mimi, any other nishans are going to buy It's a nice book. Let's grab the book. Nuru Okanga, uko pale nyuma ya camera, unundue kitabu. Anyways, guys, let's meet in the next video. May God bless you so much.